Hey there, YouTube and world, how are you all doing? I hope you all are doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic here. Just marking off a new package that's just arrived. Ah, it's this one. It's a big package, so I'm just marking it off, getting it ready to unbox. All right. So let's see what I got. Let's open this up and see what's inside. Obviously you guys know what's inside from the title of this video. But then again... Okay. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> okay. This is a surprise black pepper I was wondering where my black pepper went it did show delivered <laughs> I wasn't able to locate it all right so here is the item let's move the box all right so from the title of this video, you could tell this is a Tintin book. And from the title of the video, you could tell it's Tintin, the Art of Hershey. Oh yeah. Celebrating 90 years. So this book was actually published on the 19th anniversary of Tintin comic book. Or Tintin drawing, the Art of Hershey. He's the one who created Tintin. And so this book is dedicated to Hershey, the creator of Tintin, the artist of Tintin. And this is where it all started. This is how it all started, his rough sketch. And this book actually explains how Hershey came to, you know, creating the world of Tintin, the world that is so famous right now, all around the world. So, this is actually a museum in Belgium, Brussels, Belgium, because Tintin is originally from Belgium. And I think back in Belgium they call him Tantan. It's not Tintin, it's pronounced Tantan. Because I have a Belgian friend who goes to Belgium a lot, and he brings me a lot of Tintin stuffs from the Tintin shops and museums back there in Brussels, and he never says Tintin he says Tan Tan so yeah I guess in Belgian language you don't say Tintin so it starts off with the fantastic museum of Tintin in Brussels it explains uh, what's inside the museum and how they designed the museum comparing it to the Tintin comic books so this is the rough sketch of the museum of Tintin. So this is a work of art actually. This is a fantastic museum. I have plans to visit this in my lifetime. And I would absolutely love it. Okay. Uh, this is actually the young Hergé and his mother. And Believe it or not, this is actually Hergé, dressed up as girl. <laughs> okay, I have never seen this photo before, but this is Hergé. And he's actually dressed up as a girl. Maybe his mother dressed him up as a girl and took the picture. But here, over here is a boy. This is Hergé when he was growing up, the young Hergé. And this is where it all started. Uh, he was actually a Boy Scouts member in Belgium and uh, back in 1922 this is the first drawing of Hergé while well, he was a Boy Scout uh, member while well, they were scouting in the woods, in the forest, in the jungle. That's where it all started, that's where his drawings began. So there's some reference to real life 
photos and then drawings of Hergé comparison. This is actually a must have if you're a big Tintin comic book fan. If you like Hergé's style of drawing, which is pretty, pretty, pretty unique. If you have been watching the computer channel uh, since the start, you'd know that Tintin comic book is actually a favorite of mine because of the style of drawing that Hergé has. George Sremi, the style, the line style, they call it the line drawing. So that's the drawing that Hergé actually invented. And that's the type of drawing that I like. I like to look at and I like to, uh, you know, read. And uh, it's, it's pleasing to the eyes. You know what you're looking at. You know what's going on in the picture. And you feel good looking at the picture because it's so good. The quality is so good. So these are the early works of Hergé. This is a big book, a huge book actually. Uh, previously it was published in two volumes, but they made it into one volume in the 90, uh, 90 years of Tintin. And then there it is, there he is, Hergé George Sremer and his uh, Boy Scouts member friends. That's where Tintin actually started. This is the illustration that he took while they were, you know, camping in the woods, in the forest, in the jungle. Yep, this is super cool. This is actually history. And there he is. This is a piece of art tinted in Congo. This is the actual Congo picture. Uh, I'd like to state a fact here. I've made a video on Tintin in Congo and I've titled the video a racist comic book. Well, it was actually more of a question. It's not a title, it's a question whether you think it's a racist book or not. You see, back in those times, racism had a different image. I mean, when Tintin was drawn by Hergé, he was actually depicting historical images. He wasn't trying to implement, you know, fantasy. Uh, he wasn't trying to make up images or create fantasy images and put it in into Tintin. He wanted to have realistic effects on the Tintin comic book. So this is this picture here is actually a very very accurate description of what, what Hergé was trying to do. You see, he was trying to make Tintin look like one of those Belgian, uh, you know, settlers back in Congo. So, Tintin is actually not a racist comic book. Hergé is not a racist guy because I say that because if you have been reading Tintin comic book, you'll see Hergé has actually been very anti-racist. Over here, Tintin is actually protecting the Chinese folks from brutality by this British guy. This is a British guy. He is actually a racist and Tintin hates him. Tintin actually calls him a brute. So uh, this means Hergé hated this guy. Hergé hated racism. So this was in the Blue Lotus. If you guys have been reading Tintin comic book for a long time, you'll know this scene is from the Blue Lotus. And this guy, this British guy, was actually trying to torture or hit a rickshaw puller, a Chinese rickshaw puller, and he was abusing him and uh, calling him, you know, racist names and giving him t racist titles. And then he came up, Tintin came up to him, to this British guy, took his cane and snapped it into two pieces and he Tintin pointed out that he was the racist racist guy that was who was not invited in China they don't like racist people in China so if you're in America you're if you're in US right now uh, the Chinese Chinese folks after COVID-19 are badly affected and they have been victims of racial abuse racial uh, attacks and whatnot. So this is actually a very good picture right now 
even if it's after almost 70 or 80 years the world has not changed much so this sort of guys they still exist and Hershey pretending to be Tintin is anti-racist so let's get that clear Tintin is not a race racist comic book all right Tintin is actually anti-racist that is why Tintin got so famous around the world especially in Africa in India and in the Middle East Tintin is very very famous with Middle Eastern kids and they don't like to read comic books but they do read Tintin comic books you know Middle East does not allow a lot of t comic book because of uh, you know the content it's uh, like if if you look at Spider-Man and Superman you know it's it's not allowed in in the Middle East Middle Eastern countries because of the images it depicts especially uh, the images of female of the female gender but when it comes to Tintin it's really really uh, friendly all around the world China India you know Africa Middle East sometimes in America yeah so here he is this is the actual uh, Chinese guy who was a good friend of Hergé George Sreme this is his name is Chang and they were very very good friends this is Hergé yeah he was a smoker a lot of people at that time back then they were smokers so it's pretty normal so this book has a lot of classic comic book pages that has been printed into this uh, book Thompson and Thompson of course without Thompson and Thompson Tintin would have never been this funny Thompson and Thompson is what makes Tintin funny absolutely and here he is in the Middle East Tintin goes to the Middle East Tintin goes to Africa Tintin goes to China Tintin goes to India he goes everywhere had Hershey been a racist guy, he would have never let Tintin go out of Europe or America, you know. He would have let Tintin stay in America like Spider-Man does, like Batman does, you know. They never leave the country. They never go international. But Tintin goes international. Tintin is the last character you would like to call a racist character he is not a racist character he's an international character accepted by all all races you see an Indian lady an Indian musician if Hergé was a racist why would he draw these Hergé accepted all the cultures all the countries all the races and put them in the adventures of Tintin you know put them in his comic book in his art that's why Tintin was able to explore the entire world and not only that Tintin also explored the moon because Hergé, Hergé, George Sherman had an open mind you know he's the best comic artist I know so far today the most open-minded comic artist he never thought once of racism never ever so I can't finish this book in this video because as you can see we have not been through half of it yet but I can go on and on and make it a very long video I don't want to make long videos on tin comic book but usually the Titan comic book videos are like 8 minutes or 10 minutes or 12 minutes max but this has gone over 14 minutes right just about now King Otto's Otto Scepter the Scepter is real yep so you're gonna have to find out what else this book contains all the mysteries and everything uh, you can still find it on Amazon and eBay the book is still available and it's not way overpriced like the other books of Tintin this is very very affordable and it's very very available readily available so I'd say go and buy it and keep it as a collection uh, if you're a big Tintin fan if you're a big Tintin comic art fan and if you're a big Tintin creator, George Ramos or Hergis fan, works all the way, you know, works each and every way, whatever way you want to think about, it works. This book really works. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this book. I hope 
you keep on reading and watching the Tintin comic book review videos on the computer channel. All right, all right. Stay cool, everybody, and stay fantastic. Oh yeah.